Hey YouTubers, how would you like to know what is on your old tapes and film reels without scanning them first? This is what I'm talking about in this video. I'm Caroline from OrganizingPhotos.net and I want to give you a couple of quick tips if you find yourself in the situation of having a box of old memories and no idea what's on them. This is such a common problem that we see happening all the time and I just thought it would be very helpful for me to outline some tips for you on how to get over this. So what often happens is that we have clients that come to us and say, you know what, I have no idea what is on these tapes, I have no idea what is on these film reels, but I'm sure it's something really important that I want to preserve. I want to get them digitized, but how would I, how would I know? What do I pick, right? Which ones do I actually digitize? Uh, and oftentimes, yes, it's stuff that we want to preserve, like the baby's first steps or a first day of school or birthday parties or something like that. So we definitely want to get those things digitized, but we also want to be smart about it, right? If you have taped old 1993 episodes of Jeopardy, we really don't need to digitize those. So it's really helpful to be able to preview things before you actually select what you want to digitize. But how do you do that if you don't have access to an old projector or an old VHS player or something like that? Well, there are a couple of things that you can do. And the first thing you can do is check with your local transfer company if they have something called a blank tape check, right? Um, this is something that a lot of companies actually offer. It's just that they're not necessarily advertised. So a blank tape check is basically a preview. You will hand over the VHS tape and you will ask for this and the company will basically give you an idea of what's on the tape so that you can get um, a good idea of what's on there before you decide to digitize it or not. Now, not all companies offer this, so you definitely want to ask, but a lot of companies do. So. I know for a fact that my company does, and it is a great way to be selective about what you digitize. Um, the technician will basically do a quick five minute check for you, give you an idea of what's on the tape, and um, let you know so that you can make a good decision on whether you should digitize it or not. Now, when it comes to film, Sometimes it's not called a blank tape check, it's called a preview. Uh, it depends on the company. Mine again offers them, but it goes back and forth depending on the location and where you're at. Definitely check if your local company offers that. Um, if not, uh, what you don't want to do is put an old film reel in a projector because what happens is with age, film tends to get brittle and shrink and the little sprockets that are on the side of the film will actually not line up properly with the projector and so if you run an old reel in a sprocketed projector you run the risk of damaging it and ripping it and you don't want that and so um, a lot of the time professional uh, digitizing companies will have sprocketless uh, transfer methods so that we don't have those issues um, there are also previewers like that out there. Some are sprocketed, some are not, so you definitely want to get your hand on a good one. Um, but there are basically vintage film editors, and you can find those on eBay, um, maybe Amazon, I haven't really checked lately, but definitely eBay. Um, they were made for the cut and splice um, application, basically, for people to be able to edit uh, their film at home. And you can still put your film really nicely through it and it has like a little a little preview window um, and it has like a light behind that illuminates what the film is so you'll be able to see frame by frame what's on there it won't be able to necessarily play it you probably could I wouldn't recommend it but you can definitely um, carefully put the film through there and get an idea for what's on the film they're usually about 30 to 80 dollars and uh, so that's kind of a a good way to save some money if you want to be selective about what you want to digitize. Uh, it's important for me as a, a professional organizer to reiterate that you don't have to digitize everything. You can be selective, but definitely, definitely get those old memories um, preserved as much as you can. 
Um, another thing that you can do, for example, with slides, and it works with um, old film as well, is to use a magnifier, basically a loop. Uh, it's kind of like a small magnifying glass, and uh, that works really well if you're on budget. You can get those from Amazon, uh, pretty much any photography store, uh, and they're a really great way to sort of look uh, carefully frame by frame and see if you recognize what's on there. Works for slides really well as well. And there are even apps out there um, that you can download for your smartphone and use that as a loop also. And um, I also want to say that the same goes for light boxes. So sometimes you can uh, get light boxes that are made for uh, professional photographers. Uh, some of them are not actually very expensive. So for 30, 40, 50 dollars, you can get basically a backlit box where you can put everything on there and actually see what's there. So those are some really great ways to be able to be selective about what you digitize. And I also want to mention that a lot of the time we see free preview days come uh, and go. And that is usually with uh, Save Your Photos Month or May Day, uh, Preservation Week, uh, any type of family history conference, things like that. Usually there are companies that will come to conferences and they will actually let you preview some of your footage at their booths. And obviously, if you have your tapes ready to go, they're in good condition, then that is a great way to take advantage of some of these free preview days so that you can get an idea for what's on your old media. Definitely want to make sure that it's okay for public consumption in case it's, you know, uh, blasted live there uh, at the booth. Um, so if you don't know what's on your old tapes, be careful. But if you know for sure that it's something very innocent and um, okay for everybody to see, then you uh, can definitely take advantage of that. I do want to point out that you do want to check the condition of your film reels and tapes, especially. Um, film should be clean, free of any residue buildup. If anything is uh, brittle, if it smells like vinegar, if it's got mold, anything like that, you definitely want to contact a professional lab for help right away. Um, film especially also should have enough white leader, which is that uh, um, beginning uh, white film that leads up to the actual uh, film itself that, where you have um, the recording. Uh, it should be enough to be able to go through the machine completely and as well as the end of the film reel should also have enough. About 10 foot is usually standard. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that your film and tapes are in good condition enough to be able to, um, to be able to actually digitize it. If it's damaged, if you need help, definitely contact a pro before you experiment with it so that we don't damage it more. One final thing that I wanted to mention is us that are genealogists and family historians, we are very passionate about preserving our family history, but it is important to remember that we don't need to preserve absolutely everything. So definitely be selective in what you choose to digitize. Uh, not only does it save you money, but it saves you time and energy. And it lets us pass down curated photo archives to the next generation, uh, not hours and hours and hours of uncut footage that nobody's going to sit around and watch. So the same thing goes for obviously your home movies uh, on tape, uh, your slides, your photos, anything like that. Be sure to be selective uh, in what you digitize. Um, you know, if you have 40 landscape slides, not necessarily a, a great thing to digitize unless there's some sort of historical value to that. So Focus on what's important first, and then if you have the means to do the rest, by all means, go ahead and do that. But you can definitely be selective. It's okay. So I hope that was helpful. So preview, select, and then convert. If you can, take advantage of some of these easy tools for previewing what's on your old media before you get it converted. And uh, get those memories digitized as fast as you can. If you want more tips like this, be sure to follow my channel and subscribe. Click the little bell so that you get notifications anytime I post something new. And then visit me over at organizingphotos.net for all the latest tips and tricks. All right, see you next time.